booze book Bideker. Episode 13, Lucky 13, Lucky Josh. 13. Can you even believe it? We're just discussing the universe and how it could possibly blow up on us. <laughs> Episode 13. It's all just gravity and space time, kids. Gravity and space time. This book was great. This book I need to read two more times. I mean, it was just so really? chock full. I mean, it was it was interesting. I loved it. Bartusiak did a great job make, making it accessible for the layperson, but there was just so much information, so I can't wait to go back and read it again. Definitely the densest book we've read, probably because it's nonfiction and has real facts in it. This is our first nonfiction book. Well, besides, uh, you know, episode 12, there's no place like space. Oh, you're right. See, I didn't count it because it was a kid's book, but totally. But no it's place real. Like space. Although thing one and thing two are not real. No. So it, it kind of, <laughs> it walks the line. I suppose. It walks the line. It's a weird story arc, if you want to think too. So let's, let's just Absolutely. jump right into our 12 steps. You ready? Absolutely. I, I wrote the 12 steps this time and I really enjoyed it because you could pick from so much. So much happened. So here we go. 12 steps. We're just going to rip right through them and then, and then talk about whatever we want. Okay, step one of our 12 step program. Learn how to pronounce Ptolemy. I don't know. I hope you pronounce that right. I know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Step two, be thankful for James Lick's philanthropy. Step three, watch Edward Singleton Holden <laughs> be an ass. Hold on. What? James Lick, his philanthropy, finger looking good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> there it's was a KFC no, motto. There was no chicken. I know. There was no but chicken. But it's philanthropy. Wouldn't right. it be crazy we'll move on. if we look through that? A telescope and it was all like a chicken. Through the looking glass? Through the Ooh. That, that's a book contender. That's a book contender. <laughs> okay, realize Keeler is a trendsetter. Absolutely. I was super impressed with Keeler. Think spectroscopy is cool. I totally did. I didn't know about blue shifts and red shifts, and that's how you see how fast things are moving. This was great. See, I got a degree in French and business. I, this stuff was all new to that's me. That's what's wrong with this country. <laughs> French and business majors. Country's going so up. Step six, be sad that Keeler died. I was all like, but he's on to something. Look at all this cool stuff. And then he died. That was very sad. Too much pressure. I'm sure you were sad too. Feel it. I feel it. <laughs> Pouring up for him. Step seven, learn the difference between refractor and reflector telescopes. I had no idea. No idea. Step eight, have all sorts of mixed feelings about Hubble. We can really get into that later. Uh, mixed feelings <laughs> aplenty. Step nine, realize it's all just space, time, and gravity. At the end of the day, you know, before you nestle up in bed, you gotta think, you know, space, time, and gravity. Step 10, become enthralled in Einstein's two month visit to Mount Wilson. Step 11, read the words, space, time tells mass how to move, and mass tells space, time how to curve, and have your mind blown. <laughs> Step 12, give reverence to Marsha Bartusiak. This was a great book. I mean, I've, I've tried to read a lot of nonfiction. I mean, I've read a lot of nonfiction. It's not like I've never gotten through a nonfiction before, but it's, it's, us you know, it's usually very hard. And this was not. It's like, I want to know more. I want to know more. This is great. I think she did a really good job. Right. I think mostly because I don't know how to fact check anything about physics. Think about it. She could have fed us lies. <laughs> <laughs> I hear she didn't, though. No, no. Exactly. I'm just, I'm just going to believe that. <laughs> and there were all sorts of nuggets in there, like the cosmic seed of energy and yeah. stuff like that. It's just like, whoa, whoa. Cosmic seed of pure energy. Oh, I'm sorry. My bad. You're right. You're right. <laughs> what was your favorite part of this book, Josh? Oh, man. Was it James Lick? Is James that Lick. His neck beard. Definitely my favorite part. They had really good pictures. Really good pictures. I was waiting for like a cosmic bully to just hurl down a comet that was just yelling nerd and blew up all their experiments. <laughs> <laughs> so fun fact, uh -huh. the, the Mount Wilson Observatory and the Lick Observatory, still standing. In fact, we had a reader email us and be like, hey, I checked out the websites for these observatories. And they're all like, you can come during the day, don't come during the night, no one can help you. And I'm like, why would I want to go there during the day? All the cool stuff happens at night, up yours. And I was like, I feel you, I feel you, reader. And thanks for your input. Totally agree. What does the website look like, I wonder? 
the the Mount Wilson one is is super snobby. It's just like, <laughs> do not bug us. Just do not come here. Do not bug us. Just, Don't even sign up for our newsletter. It, pretty much. Like, it was. Just, yeah. But what you gonna do? I guess I guess when you're an astronomer, you can get away with that kind of thing. Yeah, you don't got time for French and business. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so I like how the book started out. Like, it started out in 1925, mm -hmm. and then we go back, and then kind of get up to that point, and then right. a little bit past it. You know what I mean? We got Tarantinoed. Right. A little bit. And I think it's really funny that a book about gravity and space time did a loop on you. How fitting. Time travel. <laughs> the book wormhole. Okay, quiz me, Josh. Quiz me. Do it. Quiz you? Yeah. Oh my god, you brought this out of nowhere. <laughs> when? And I'm, I'm living a very dangerous life because this book is like chock full of facts. He could do anything and I'd be like, I don't know, but I don't know. I don't know if this was directly referenced in the book, but I know it was referenced at happy hour last night. When did Einstein develop his theory of general relativity? Uh, 1916? It was 1916! Oh my gosh, I got it right! <laughs> now you gotta quiz me. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna drink to that because I got it right. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty impressive. Oh. 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 Okay, okay. <laughs> Very emphatic. <laughs> okay, so now I gotta quiz you. Now I gotta quiz you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, what was. What was. Oh, this, this is not like really a fact question. This is more like an opinion question. What? So during Einstein's two month visit sure. to Mount Wilson, what was the most interesting, entertaining thing that you learned from our dear author, Marcia Bartusiak? This was so cool. I have no idea. Really? I have no idea. No, but you know about the no, no. I'm asking you. It's not. It's not like a. It's not like a yes, no, right, wrong. Just, My favorite thing was uh, Einstein went to Mount Wilson. Okay. What do you think about that? I, I think that's very meta. It's like his. Big, it's like his big sir. Right. <laughs> yeah. Mine was the when he meets Charlie Chaplin. Okay. And Charlie Chaplin's all. You referenced this. Before we even started recording. And Charlie Chaplin says, they, what is, what is it, it's something, I'm totally paraphrasing, but it's like, they love me because they understand me, and they love you because they don't understand you. It's like, oh, Charlie Chaplin. But did we understand Charlie Chaplin? I mean, he was acting that whole time. <laughs> wow, that's deep. I guess we never really know anyone. Exactly. Speaking of Big Sur, no. <laughs> I don't. So we had we had some pretty big personalities. How did you feel about Hubble? Because that was I one of the steps. Was like, I don't really know how you feel about Hubble. I don't know. You know, all I knew beforehand was the Hubble Space Telescope or whatever right. that shows us all the galaxies. And like, oh man, we're so small. It was cool it was to like, hear names like Doppler and yeah, exactly. Hubble. And even at the beginning, um, the the comet, Haley's comet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here I thought it was just a really good commercial rock song, but right. it's a real thing. <laughs> Wait, what's a real thing? <laughs> this is real, right? There's a really, there's there's a really bad happening? song on 93X. I think it's happening. By some band. It's well, hard to I know mean, for sure. It's all hey, it's all just space, time, and gravity. That's what I was gonna <laughs> say. But we all pro we all originated from the same quantum, so there. I think, uh... <laughs> I don't know. Hey, Crosby, Sills, and Ash said it best. We're stardust. The Crosley <laughs> Telescope. That was cool. Crosley? Nice. Crosley. Crosley? Crosley. Crosley, Crosley or Crosley? Fits I don't know. Crosby, Stills, and Ash, that's for sure. But yeah, when you said that, I was like, oh, the telescope. <laughs> I think it's really cool how Keeler wanted to use the reflective... Reflector? Refractive? Telescope? No. Or reflective? Reflective. Okay. And nobody else thought that was cool. He's up there like, why are you even bothering with that? That's not the way to make a telescope. Because he wasn't it wasn't even in the big main observatory. He was off like mm -hmm. in no man's land. And then that was the one that really brought home the good pictures. Yeah. Keeler was my favorite. I, I, I was so uh, sad when he died. I was so how sad. How did they describe him? Weren't they like he like he had like a weird southern drawl and like he just didn't seem like a scientist? And they were just glad that he wasn't the first director. Everyone was just really glad he was. What was the name of that first director? He was a complete ass. It's actually one of our steps that I can remember. 
And by remember, I mean read it. Holden. Yeah, so no one liked Holden. Everyone was, me. was no, super, super excited that Keeler was there. Basically because he wasn't Holden. Fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, Edward Singleton Holden sounds like a jerk. Right. You know, who named that kid that? I agree with you wholeheartedly. So if you want to get smart and do really well on the astrophysics category of Jeopardy, read the day we found the universe. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> this is one of the few, because I always say, I don't want to watch a movie twice. I don't want to read a book twice. There's too many books. There's too many movies. Nobody's got time for this. I am going to read this book again because it just... It was so interesting, made me feel smarter, and going through it again, I know I'll pick up more because it was just Absolutely. chock full yeah. of great narrative. I missed a lot. Like, when a book is this dense, I kind of gloss over a lot of stuff because I'm like, this is a lot of information for me to take in. Yeah. And then I just remember, like, things that make me laugh. That's good. That is, I mean, that is good, but now when it comes to science... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, see you next episode. Later.